what a little local show could be uh, could be like. And as I said, this is back in 2018. We usually get together. The show is on a Saturday in March, and we get together uh, Friday night at six between six and ten. Uh, we have to set up the Westfield community room for the dealers. Uh, the frames arrive by a truck. We have to carry them in, set them up. Takes about four hours. So here's Nick Lombardi at the left, the president, and John Crowd and Roger, Roger Scoyles uh, uh, helping to set up. As I said, we do six to ten to do the basic setup. And then we arrive at eight o'clock in the morning from eight to ten, and, and we help the dealers set up, and we help the ex exhibitors set up. And at 10 o'clock, we open up, and uh, here's our welcome table uh, with John Crowd and Alan Fisk. And here you can get your program. You can buy a show cover. Uh, you can buy old show covers. Uh, uh, you can learn about the Westfield Stamp Club. You can get a membership application. And if you need the restroom, it's that door in the back. So uh, this is where we welcome everybody. Here's... Uh, a very unusual one of our uh, uh, table holders, uh, Audrey. Uh, Audrey's, as I say, Audrey's the name and the stamps on everything is the game. Audrey actually makes clothing with stamps. She also does sculpture with stamps and she she has a little business with this. And uh, oh. of course I, I couldn't help buying a, <laughs> a, a French uh, area bow tie uh, to wear to stamp shows. From Audrey, it's it's really neat. It's it's a clip on. Thanks, thank thank God. I don't have to mess with it. Uh, and uh, I'm also a colonialist, and you'll notice right there a little France used in reunion stamp uh, that made its way to the tie. So uh, that's that's quite nice. So these are actual stamps adhered to the cloth. Yeah, she has a way of putting them on and uh, lacquering them, and she's got a whole technical routine that she goes through. And she buys, she has sources of stamps in bulk. I mean, okay. if, she, if she needs 10,000 US flag stamps, Scott number something or other, she has a way of getting them. And I, actually, I, you, can, you can see back there that uh, uh, little jacket, it looks like a children's jacket. I think all the stamps are the same. The post office always comes too. I, I, I wondered if they did enough business and I, I was kind of worried about that. Turns out uh, on the Saturday show from 10 to 4, they sell $1,500 to $2,000 uh, uh, worth of uh, unused U.S. stamps uh, from the post office. In fact, it's probably the biggest post office stamp sales day it has all year. Huh. Uh, so they're more than overjoyed to show up uh, every year. They bring a good assortment. They bring packaging material so you can take your stamps home. And it's a good place to stock up. I always buy a couple hundred dollars worth of uh, unused stamps at the show. Here's Fred Scavera. Uh, I told you about the show covers, and he's working on doing perfect cancellations. And you can see the care with which he's, he's doing that, and he's working on them. And here's the show cancellation, the show cover. Uh, it was the 75th anniversary of the Guadalcanal victory, okay, in World War II. And uh, this is a cover that uh, Fred designed and we had it printed up. Post office gave us an official cancellation. So it's, it's real, it's, it's not a fake thing. Uh, and we sell these covers at, at the show and uh, we have a stock of, of old ones. Of course, we have exhibits and with exhibits, you need judges. And we got some really good ones. This is uh, Mark Schwartz and Bill Schultz, uh, both of the Philadelphia area. Uh, they came up a little early to Westfield, so they arrived at nine o'clock and went over to our famous diner and had breakfast at Vicky's uh, and then showed up at the show about 1030 uh, to do their work as as judges. Here's one of our uh, 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 regular dealers, Tom Jacks. He's a dealer member of the Westfield Stamp Club, specializes mostly in U.S., does Canadian also, a little British. Uh, Tom's been in, in the club and in business for over 40 years, travels all over the country uh, to stamp shows, even out to West Westpex and uh, the big California shows, the Arizona show. 
Uh, so he's a real serious dealer. In fact, in, in the 80s, uh, Tom's a, a PhD in biology and works uh, worked, uh, as I did, for Merck and Company, the Merck Research Labs, big pharma company. And Tom admitted to me one year he made more selling stamps on the weekend than he did at Merck, <laughs> uh, even, even with his PhD and a fancy job title. Another dealer is Drew uh, uh, Winteringham. He's a specialist, not in covers, but stamps. And you can see he's got quite an extensive collection. And if you have some specialty items that you'd like to have, Drew's, Drew's the guy to, uh, to check with. To raise a little money to support the show, because it, it, it costs us a little bit, even though we charge dealer fees to put this show on, uh, you could sponsor a frame. And here, Joe Ch uh, Cherverniak, uh, paid, I think it was the $25 to be a frame sponsor. Uh, we usually have 30 to 40 frames at the, at the show. Not, not all are sponsored. Uh, here's a young family enjoying an obscure French colonial exhibit. And the daughter, the, the, at age four months, was the youngest visitor to the show. Mm. Uh, I, I, hope she, I hope she had a good time. Uh, here's member uh, Louis Capriano enjoying his gold medal. Uh, he put a one-frame exhibit in on the U.S. 1908 Christmas seal. Yes, he's a specialist in Christmas seals. And you can see from his exhibit, he's, you know, he's studying the production and the use of this one Christmas seal and all its varieties, uh, uh, markings, the, the whole thing. And here's a close-up of one of his better pages. Uh, two covers, uh, two postcards, actually, to China from San Francisco featuring this seal. Uh, they're quite rare, quite unusual. You can see uh, a small image of each of the postcards. They're, they're quite nice. Uh, and, and the interest, interesting aspect of it, which I note, uh, I bring in President Lombardi again. Uh, it's competition for him. Nick is a specialist in this two cent Washington shield issue of 1902. And last year, his 10 frame exhibit of that one stamp won the C of C uh, 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 in the United States. So it was the top exhibit uh, in the country that year. Uh, and the, the question is, I, I don't think Nick has the, the 1908 Christmas seal used in conjunction with his, with his famous issue. Here's uh, Dave Steadley. He's the guy holding that little frame picture. He won the one frame grand award. And there's Nick and the judges uh, posing in front of David's, uh, David's exhibit. And just, just a little close up. Uh, the, the award was a, uh, a caricature of a cover, very, very fancily mounted. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it notes a cat's philosophy of life. Unfortunately, I don't remember what's on there. And I was really hoping it was going to be something, you know, really significant on Cat's philosophy of life, as with our, our uh, new vice presidential candidate, cats have become quite significant in the last couple of weeks. And, and, and maybe this says something, something that uh, Mr. Vance would be interested in. And here's, here's David next to his exhibit. It's really a fantastic one frame exhibit on the American Express in Paris, okay? They had an office in Paris and David collects mail to and from the American Express office in Paris. And it's, it's one of these things you have to work hard and dig deeply. Uh, and then when you're getting close to done, all you can produce is a one frame exhibit. Uh, and you can see David is mounting his on the large size, double size pages. He's got one of these neat printers that, that can do that. It's interesting that the one frame grand award that that uh, uh, cat cover, uh, which we call the Sid Snyder Memorial Award, uh, named for a famous member of the club, was graciously donated by one Eleanor uh, Beniatti, Beniatti uh, of Kenilworth, New Jersey. Interestingly, she and her husband worked for the United States Foreign Service for their whole careers. And they, they, they lived in the world. And as they, as they lived in various places, they always cut the stamps off of the covers that came into 
wh whatever embassy they were working at at the time, and they saved them. And when they got to Kenilworth, New Jersey and retired, they donated these bags of stamps to the Westfield Stamp Club. The, the, the cat frame came along, came along with it. Dave Steadley took a frame to uh, remember his parents. And in that frame was an exhibit by Alan Fisk uh, entitled, I Bought the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, a whole one frame Brooklyn Bridge exhibit with, with you can see stamps, you can see postal history, you can see ephemera. And what you can also see, uh, Alan is an old fashioned guy. He doesn't go for the computer. He doesn't even have a typewriter. Okay, uh -huh. it's all hand lettered. Okay, and he just, he, that's the way he likes to do it. Okay, so it's very, very interesting, uh, interesting and unusual exhibit. Oh, here's that obscure French colonies exhibit. Looks like it did okay. All right, and, and the, obviously this is my exhibit. It's on the group type. And I was comparing two colonies, two American colonies, the St. Pierre and Miquelon, a little tiny colony in French Guiana, one located on the northern part of, of South America. I'll just show you a page from, from uh, uh, each of the colonies. The one from, what was St. Pierre and Miquelon? It was two tiny islands south of Newfoundland. And the key was it was located close to the Grand Banks and its rich fish supply. And for even pre-stamp time, uh, the French and the British were there uh, fishing, okay, to, to, to gather fish and preserve them uh, uh, for food. And on the first page, I show two printed uh, matter items, five centimes printed matter eight uh, for up to 50 grams of printed material, uh, showing the two cancellations that were used uh, in, that, uh, in the colony uh, at that time. One, one is actually a folded print and matter piece, and the second one is, is an envelope. Of course, uh, French Guiana was a totally different colony, had nothing to do with food. It was a penal colony, okay? And they did a little gold mining, okay? That was the purpose of, of that colony. And to introduce the exhibit, you see the red border, so I think it's important. It's actually a Dubois-type letter card that was shipped to all of the colonies. And then the, these cards and the Dubois stamps in the late 18, 1880s, early 1990s, were overprinted with the colony's name to make them colony specific. So this is a 15 centime Dubois letter card, overprinted Guyane for French Guiana, used from Cayenne, and raised to the 50 centime rate with two uh, nice group type stamps. Okay, that's what got it into the collection. It's to Strasbourg, which of course is not French at this time, it's German, uh, 1896. Remember the Germans got it as a result of the Franco-Prussian War, both Alsace and Lorraine. And the nice thing about it, oh, it's got a little French packet uh, transit here, which, which makes it a little better item. And when you open it up, it has a full message. Uh, it, it's not a philatelic item. So it's genuine use of, of that very rare letter card with, with group type. But, you know, my exhibit, ah, you know, that, that didn't attract much attention. Who's, who's interested in French colonies? Uh, but Fred Scavera, who was preparing the covers, uh, uh, had an interesting one frame exhibit. Fred is, is, is an editor. Uh, he, he really likes to edit journals and he's done some serious editing to the American Topical Association, uh, which required a lot of postage. So what did Fred do? He wrote to the uh, 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 bureau in, in, what is it, Kansas City now, the, the philatelic agency, and he used to buy huge quantities of the six cent Jenny inverted sheet. Okay, from 2013, you guys remember that? Uh, I still have some. Uh, I, I have probably about 30 or 40 still sealed. Well, Fred bought so many. Uh, I don't know if you remember the story. The, the, the uh, postal agency was printing uh, millions of these sheets, and they decided to pepper them with 100 sheets uh, w randomly where the planes were uh, properly printed, not like they are at the right, upside down, mimicking the famous inverted Jenny. And, and they just distributed these in the stock 
randomly. And Fred bought so many that he actually got one of the inverted, inverted Jennies, which means the right side up Jennies, which you see here. And guess what? When you put that item up for auction, it sells for 50 grand today, $50,000. And Fred, Fred got one uh, in his uh, uh, in his purchases from the philatelic agency and put it into the exhibit. And I, I think that made the Westfield Leader, our local paper uh, that week, that this this uh, very rare modern uh, era in quotes uh, was <laughs> was shown at the Westfield show. By the way, uh, Fred mentioned only 33 have been recovered. So there's 67 out there if wow. you want to order up some in, some inverted jennies. <clears throat> okay, well, that's where I end the story of the show. And uh...